So I, I was going to step you into the future. Let's let's go 20, <laughs> 20 years into the future. Yes. And uh, you have somebody that's walking into a robot store, and they they have different ratings on the robots, depending on um, uh, how how intelligent and how bright they are. And <clears throat> I've been speculating on uh, that we're going to come up with a rating system similar to. Um, horsepower that we're going to somehow rate the artificial intelligence in each of these robots. And so I, I base it on this notion of a human intelligence unit. So the equivalent to one, uh, uh, one HIU would be one human intelligence unit. So some robots are rated at 2.4, some robots are rated at 8.3 or and, and some of them are 0.62, depending on what your application is. And uh, how, how likely do you think that some sort of a rating system like that will happen in the future? And is that a good way to approach the, the thought process on future, future intelligence in machines? It's a really interesting idea. I, I think the idea of measuring intelligence, particularly for artificial, for not human beings, but for human, what humans create is tough, even defining what intelligence is. But being able to have something you can actually make a comparison and say, well, how flexible is, uh, is a particular robot or a particular model? What, what kinds of problems, given a, given a benchmark, how quickly can it solve the problems in the benchmark? I think that would be very useful. And the other thing is you could see the, the example you provide of somebody walking into a store or going to a, an online site in 20 years They'll want to be able to say, how do I compare these two things? They don't want, they don't want to have a manifest of 100 different characteristics, like uh, buying a computer in 1992 and say, well, I don't know. Right. Is it good? <laughs> so, yeah, I could definitely see, I could see, yeah, there's, there, there'll be an appetite for having something that's, that's straightforward, reliable, and consistent that gives somebody an idea, are they getting value for their, for the universal credits or whatever we're spending Right. In 20 years. Our, our, our bit cash. What, what do you think would go on uh, the, the suite of benchmarks that a, a robot or an algorithm had to, to go through in order to have its intelligence, its intelligence assessed? That's a really, that's, that's a really interesting it's question. It's an obstacle course. Well, yeah. so I, I think, I think that's <laughs> worth including, right? Because being able yeah. to navigate the physical world wound up being one of the harder problems to solve. So it, it it's well known that at the first artificial intelligence conference in Dartmouth, and I think it was 1953, they said that it, it would only take like a dozen scientists working for six months or something like that to build a, a, a algorithm that performs at the level of a human. But it wound up being the case that walking up the stairs is actually a pretty difficult visual problem. It's hard. Can you believe that AI people over committing and under delivering? Right. Like that's <laughs> unprecedented. That that I'm glad happen. we never repeated that mistake in the exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Learn, learn from years. the past. Yes. <laughs> we did that one time and never again. No, but I think an obstacle course would be valid. Uh, something like, you know, getting out of a room or, or being able to like navigate a social situation. Like, I mean, can, can you figure out when people are tense or can you figure out when solving a crossword puzzle? Yeah. Solving a crossword puzzle would be a good one. You know, it's, it's yeah, you could say, but then you look at the things that have been said as bench, the Turing test right. is something is classic kind of, is something, is something actually a useful intelligence. And there are cheats. There are people say, well, this passed the Turing test, but it's not really the Turing test. So people, you know, they bob and weave about that. Uh, being able to beat a, a chess grandmaster was supposed to be a grand challenge. Right. And IBM, the company I used to work for, just said, we're, we're going to back up as many trucks full of cash as we have to to get this done. Yeah. All the hardware in the world, just going to brute force our way and do it. And yeah, it succeeded. But was it really that was it really that important? Right. So I, I think it's a, it's a it's a difficult thing to say. What's a test that's actually going to remain meaningful, and is going to provide a comparison? I think it's really it would be really really useful as a consumer. That's exactly what you want. You want a simple way to determine whether I'm getting value for my money. But I think it's going to be difficult to have a test that that lasts and that doesn't provide a way. To, there's there's some kind of shortcut right. that does really well on the test, but doesn't actually provide the value that you think you're going to be getting. Yeah. I don't want to leave my baby with this robot. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it might just have some <laughs> truly bizarre failure mode where it encounters a boundary case that, that was not in the training data. No one could possibly have foreseen. And it winds up not having the flexibility you thought it did because it made it all the way through your benchmarks. And yeah. it's some 
you know, 10 quintillion parameter neural network that just blew, blew everyone's mind when it came out. But in this one thing, it made a mistake that a human would never make. And now your you know, kid is floating in a pool or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, building on some of your comments, there, there are a couple of interesting philosophical questions there. And, and we keep coming back to this with the Turing test is whether or not being able to fool a human is the sort of standard that you want to have an algorithm meet. So when we set out to design airplanes or, or spacecraft, we, we didn't do it so that it was good enough that other sparrows in the air would be, would think it was one of them, right? So, so do we actually want to have it mimic human intelligence or be able to fit in? Uh, do we want that to be the, the test that we want to, that we, that we want to have it pass? And then the other thing that, that I thought of as you were talking is that it wound up being the case that quite a lot of problems that we thought would require really serious breakthroughs in algorithms or an understanding of intelligence were amenable to brute force solutions. Yeah. So it turns exactly. out that if you just stack enough neural networks and you just throw enough data in there and you just do enough alpha beta pruning, you get something that can beat Gary Kasparov at chess. And I think Go was a little bit different, but even that's just a, from what I understand, just a huge convolutional neural net. So I wonder if, if you think deep learning, if, if you just do enough of it, like GPT-10 or GPT-25, will, will get us to artificial general intelligence? Or, or will we have to go back to the drawing board and try something else?